Welcome to another episode of Eric Witt Whiskey Studies, and in this video, I'm gonna do a review of the Ardbeg Heavy Vapors Committee release. But before I get into this, I'm gonna tell you about the uh, profile of Ardbeg Distillery, focusing on uh, production, and uh, then I'll tell you a little bit about this whiskey. Ardbeg Distillery is located on the south coast of the Isle of Isla, Argyll and Butte, Scotland, in the Inner Hebrides group of islands. The name Ardbeg is an anglization of a Scottish Gaelic term meaning the small promontory. A promontory is a point of highland that juts out into a large body of water. Ardbeg Distillery was opened in 1815 by McDougall and Company and it began operating in 1818. The current owner of Ardbeg is Moet Hennessy Louis Vuitton or LVMH. The current manager of Ardbeg Distillery is Colin Gordon. Gillian McDonald is the master blender and head of whiskey creation at Ardbeg Distillery. Dr. Bill Lumsden is Ardbeg Distillery's director. Ardbeg's water comes from Loch Ugudal three miles up the hill behind the distillery. The water flows down the hill and runs into Loch Arnhem Best. From there, the burn takes it to Charlie's Dam at the distillery, and from there, it is piped into the mash house. Ardbeg's maltings come from Port Ellen and is peated at 55 ppm. Ardbeg distillery has stainless steel mash tuns, 12 fur washbacks, four stills, that is two wash stills and two spirit stills. Ardbeg Distillery has four shell and tube condensers. The typical distillation strength is anywhere between 61 and 72% alcohol by volume, and the cast filling strength is 63.5% alcohol by volume. Ardbeg's core range includes the Ardbeg five-year-old Wee Beastie, Asian ex bourbon cask and ex Oloroso sherry cask bottled at 47.4% alcohol by volume. The Ardbeg 10 year old is aged in ex bourbon cask and is bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. The Ardbeg Cory Reckon is aged in ex bourbon cask and is bottled at 57.1% alcohol by volume. The Ardbeg Udall is aged in ex bourbon cask and ex Oloroso sherry cask and is bottled at 54.2% alcohol by volume. Ardbeg also has limited editions such as the Ardbeg 19-year-old Trayvon. Ardbeg Distillery also has committee exclusives such as the Ardbeg Heavy Vapors Committee release Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. For this whiskey, the purifier responsible for Ardbeg's exalted balance has gone missing and Heavy Vapors is the result. The most full-blown Ardbeg ever. Without the purifier, all those pungent peaty vapors stay within the liquid changing the typical balance of the flavors in an Ardbeg dram. It is non-chill filtered, has natural color, it's bottled at 57.1% alcohol by volume. The original retail price was around $157. Prices now range from $275 to over $400. So if you have been following me for a while, you know that I am a big fan of Ardbeg Distillery. As you can see right here, got plenty of Ardbeg going on. I visited the distillery twice, the first time in uh, June 2018 and more recently in July 2023. Now Ardbeg to me is sort of like that this uh, that go for it, go for it you have that you're madly in love with at times, but she also drives you nuts. And so at times you think, okay, I'm breaking it off, but then you kind of go, but I miss her, so you get back together. And then she does something to drive you crazy, so you break up again, but then you miss her, so you come back. And it's sort of this on again, off again relationship. That's my relationship with Ardbeg Distillery. Love the core range, always have. It's been these committee releases, these special extra, the other bottles that have been really hit and miss. Dark Cove, Ardbeg Dark Cove committee release, one of my favorites. I like the Ardbeg, 
and some other ones. However, Fermutation was one that uh, made me sad, uh, if not just outright pissed off. But when I visited the distillery in July 2023, uh, I was given a special tour there and I had such a strong sense of gratitude uh, from the uh, way I was treated there. I thought, you know, I'm not gonna go home empty handed. Uh, I gotta pick up something and something that's a little bit more challenging and get back home. So these, the committee releases, are, the cast strength are really released around March. The 46% version tend to come out uh, end of May going into June for uh, Ardbeg Day. So I typically, if I'm gonna buy a committee release, I'll get the March version and I'll tr get them as soon as possible so that I'm maybe one of the first people to uh, review them. Didn't buy one this year because I've been a little bit irked by some of the releases uh, by Ardbeg and I pretty much just written off the committee releases all together. But I was like, what, you know what? I really, really, really in enjoyed uh, my tour of the distillery, saw the changes that have taken uh, place there. Uh, they, they now have more stills and so forth. Um, I shared my photography and video uh, of my trip to uh, Ardbeg uh, in a, a live stream in which I uh, talked about my entire trip to, to Isla 2023. So if you want to see the rest of the photos in the video, uh, check out uh, that live stream. So this whiskey, it's not a bad whiskey, but it is somewhat disappointing. You know, like the fermentation in which basically they had an overextended fermentation of like two weeks and I didn't like the results of it. To me, I go, why would you put something out like that on the market? The wine industry, when a, when a winery has a bad vintage, or it doesn't quite isn't quite up to par with their with their wines, they'll sell off the bulk juice, or just altogether just give up on it. During the uh, fire seasons that we've had here in California, a lot of wineries did not produce a vintage because there was so much smoke smoke date in wines. You don't necessarily want that. If something went wrong with a production. And it's you know really not going to meet a quality of a whiskey that should be going along with uh, your reputation. Why in the hell are you bottling it and then selling it for something that it sells for as much money as these ones do? Unless you're like someone who has a bad case of bo, and you don't realize that you stink. You, you ever meet someone like that? You're like, dude, take a freaking shower, man. Whoa, dude, you stink. Sometimes people can't smell their own stink. So, what is this whiskey like? Now I want to say this, well, one other thing. When I visited the distillery, I picked up, I forgot to mention this, I picked up they ha uh, a comic book. They have um, a comic book that went along with this bottle, and I like it. I, I like it. In fact, I picked up two of them. One to, you know, preserve and, you know, keep it under plastic. And then this other one to actually take, you know, thumb through it and read uh, and throw it and have it on my uh, coffee table in my living room. I dig the humor. I dig, uh, you know, the not taking everything too seriously. I, I like all that. I, 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 I like all that. I think it's funny, you know, and, and I like that. As long as the quality of the whiskey is there and you're not just leaning in on marketing gimmicks and marketing schemes. I'm hoping someone at Ardbeg Distillery, someone at LVMH is listening to this. I doubt they will, because who, who, who cares what some stupid whiskey tuber thinks? Um, but as long as they're making money, hands over fist, and continue to, uh, hand, hand over fist, and I continue to expand, they're probably not gonna listen to this, but I, I but for my heart, as a, as, a, as a devotee of Ardbeg, please listen to this. Of the core range, my least favorite is the Ardbeg Weed Beastie. This is a one that uh, needs a lot of breathing. It has a bourbon cask and cherry cask. When you first open it up, it's very new make character like. But when you allow it to breathe and open up uh, and everything becomes much more integrated, the sherry cask starts showing itself and it actually comes across as a really nice dram. Now, still today, my favorite is the Ardbeg. 10 year old, the Ardbeg 10 year old in terms of the, the core range. Uh, Corey Vrecken and Ugadol are gonna follow uh, closely on its heels 
as more into the cash drink versions. I think it's still, the Red Bag 10 is still one of the highest quality price ratio whiskeys out there on the market. Now, the heavy vapors. From a neck pour or all the way down to here, I've got it now down to here, it is unbelievably young. It is very new makey in character. That sort of lemon, not just lemon and lime as most art bags do, but sort of a melon character. And if you've ever had new make, uh, it's very, 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 very uh, strong. The art bag five-year-old Wee Beastie is very similar to that. However, the advantage with the Wee Beastie is uh, it has a better peak character to it. And that sherry cast starts showing itself with some more aeration and consequently gives it uh, some more balance and more development and more complexity to the whiskey and not just a smack upside the head of smoke and peat. Now, what do I get on this one? Bitter baking chocolate or dark chocolate. Ash. There are a lot of different aromas and flavors you can get from peat smoke. What I tend to like is something that's more barbecue-like, a little more savory, and some peppery notes. You can also get some peppery notes, like talisker. You get peppery note from the peat. This is pretty much just straight up ash. This is the kind of ash character I would get from a whiskey that was aged in a cask that previously contained uh, peated whiskey. I, I've talked about this in several other videos in which I reviewed uh, Scotch whiskeys that were aged in a cask that previously contained peated whiskey in it. And what, it did, what you get is a very narrow, aspect of the peat range which is mostly just ash and that's what I get on this. So a lot of new make character, some dark chocolate and a lot of ash on the palate. Get that melon, lemon, lime and new make character up front. Halfway through, it becomes bitter. There's a bitter dark chocolate and very ashy. And that's what continues into the, into the finish. And that's what lingers. Right now, what I'm getting is that ashiness and then some mint. The mint is sort of del a delay. It's a little bit like a York's peppermint patty. And it has a long lingering minty finish. If you're a big fan of mint, of peppermint, then maybe you're gonna like that. Yeah, I like mint, but I, I like balance, and I like complexity, and I like the development. I want something more going on there. Uh, there's also a sense of, I almost like dirt, dirt. This is gonna sound crazy, but when I, <laughs> when I visited uh, Isla, and you know, these peat bogs and so forth, and you pick up a chunk of peat, just for curiosity, I know it sounds crazy. I just wanted, to, what does peat taste like? Tasted some peat, it just tastes like dirt. It just tastes like dirt. Well, there is that dirt character from peat in this. And that I, I, don't, I don't like. It's not super offensive, but I, I don't like this. Um, If I was producing this whiskey and I didn't want to chuck it and I was going to preserve it, I was going to, okay, what can we do with this to bring us some counterbalance, to bring some uh, more complexity to it? I would have taken it from this and put it into a sherry cask, put it into a sherry cask. Uh, it would have brought more complexity to it and counterbalanced it. Uh, secondly, I would have aged it a hell of a lot younger. I would guess this is three to five years, three to five years. And to be spending this much money on a whiskey that young, uh, that's robbery. I'm, I'm, that's that, that's that's ridiculous. You're just banking on the name, the gimmicks, and everything else. And, and so when someone's doing that, it's just pissing me off. I'm just telling like it. it. It's just pissing me off. So I would have put it into a sherry cask. I would have uh, given some more time, uh, give it a, f a few more years, and you actually could have had something really, 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 uh, really, really, really nice. So I'm hoping someone at Ardbeg Distillery someone at LVMH will watch this, will listen to this, 
as someone who from coming from a fan say hey please stop stop and if you watch other reviews such as from uh, Scott and Bart at the Scott's Test Dummies and, and other whiskey tubers, they're going to tell you the exact same thing. Uh, watch Matt and Will at the Whiskey Crusaders, they're going to tell you the exact same thing. They're going to tell you the exact same thing. Uh, it, it, you you got to stop. This is ridiculous. And if I'm, I'm going to score this, what am I going to give it? Um, I, I'd go 79 points. 79 points. It's one of the lowest scores that I've given in a really long time. Um, it's, it, it's, it, it, and it's, it's, it's sad and I'm, I'm somewhere between sad and pissed off so, somewhere in between those two. The one, but the, unfortunately, I think the only way that they'll listen is if things affect them financially and one guy in the United States probably isn't going to do it that much, but, um, we'll see how it goes. All right. Uh, this is uh, an honest and sincere uh, review. If you like this review and you appreciate what I'm doing, uh, give this video a thumbs up and ring the bell to be notified when I go live or post a new video. Until next time, Slan Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.